about team average today. Forget the average golfer's opinion, it's about team average opinion. We've got a number of golfers coming down to Four Golf Chester today to try out the new Cobra F9 driver. Already lots of positivity about this driver, but I'm really interested to know what happens when it's in the hands of real golfers. So we've got a number of golfers coming in, different ages, different handicaps, different swing speeds, and perhaps all looking for different things in terms of performance from a driver. And that's what we're gonna find out during this testing. And at the end of the day, we will see a conclusion on what our golfers found. We're gonna start things off. It's over to Walter, and he's gonna be the first one up to it, this Cobra F9. very nice club. Uh, I put the underside is uncomplicated. I notice there's no sliding weights but there is the weight front to back to adjust the launch angle. The, the yellow doesn't bother me at all. I understand you can get this club in white but the yellow looks very attractive to my eye and turning it over equally attractive on the front. I think it's a very nice well put together club. I think the sound and feel of this club is excellent. You can tell where you've hit it, but even when you haven't hit it on the center, you still get a good feel. So it's a very pleasant club to, to hit. It just looks really, really nice. And you go out there and you think, yes, I can hit that. That looks really good. And for the price point when you're coming into it, this, this is an excellent club. I think Cobra have got it absolutely spot on with the price point of this club at 349. Obviously the big players, Callaway, TaylorMade, are gonna come in as they traditionally do and quite frequently do. But Cobra has obviously thought about this they realise they're not quite there with the big boys yet, but I think this is the club that's going to bring the gap. I think it's going to breach the gap happily. People will fork out £349 for this and think, I've got something that's really nice and I'm going to enjoy playing. So I think that it's a masterstroke from Cobra. I think they've got a winner. I think the performance of this club is very good. I play a Strixon at the moment, which I got last year, and I think I play reasonably well with it. I get a very good feel from it. I know exactly where I've hit the ball in the club face, and I would say the same is true with this. The only thing was, of course, I was getting slightly better numbers, which, in all fairness, anyone would hope to expect, you know, with something like this. So I would say the performance is excellent. As I say, the value for money, the looks, it ticks all the boxes for a lot of people. I think it's going to be a success, and I would seriously consider it on the basis of the performance alone, considering this club this year. Although, as I say, I'm quite happy with mine, but again, both clubs similarly at the same price point. And I think that's what people are looking for now. They don't want to be paying £500 just because it's a name. They want to know actually how it performs. This is excellent. So that's numbers and opinion there from Walter. And next, it's Andy Roper, who's next up. Nine handicap golfer. Uh, Tightlist 915D2 driver is currently in his bag. Let's see what Andy thought of this uh, Cobra F9. looking club isn't it uh, a lot of colors jump out at you from the underside of it really but from the top end I think it's quite classic if you take out the the lumps and bumps which are on there then uh, it's quite a classic looking club from from above uh, an awful lot of tech on it um, comfortable with it over the ball I like it it, it sits nice um, it, it, it's not too big a head I like it quite compact um, and it does look like that uh, I'm not a massive fan of things on the top of the club. I'd like the fins, like on the ping and on this, you know, which is supposed to be for the aerodynamics, I suppose. But um, I'm not a massive fan of them. But to be fair, because they're sort of blended into the crown, they don't stand out a massive amount. Okay. Um, so it's, it's good on the eye. I like it. Obviously, sound as you feel, isn't it? That's yeah. So the, the the sound of it, I really like, and that was the first thing I picked up on as soon as it the first ball was uh, totally different to the type of club I'd normally pick up and hit. Uh, it's not very tinny, uh, it's quite a solid sound off the face, uh, which for me I think uh, inspires a bit of confidence as opposed to that tinny sound for me can quite often make me think I'm losing the ball one way or another. I don't know why, it's just the way it converts in my mind, but with this it feels like you're hitting it solid, even the miss hits feel solid uh, off the face, I like it. Okay. I've been quite vocal about the price of clubs to be honest, the way they've gone in the last sort of two years. I know there's always been one or two clubs that stand out even going back 10-15 years but 
lately it seems like the, the starting point tends to be around that 450 sort of mark for a club and I think that's far too high uh, for most uh, golfers day in day out. 359 to me seems like a reasonable amount of money uh, and for the amount of tech that's in it and the quality of the club I think that offers great value. Overall performance I love it. Uh, as I said to you when I turned up I'm actually in the market for changing driver at the moment so um, I'm obviously looking across the board, I've been for a fitting, uh, trying different clubs out there um, and this really surprised me. I've, I've, I've always quite liked, liked Cobra and I have played their woods before um, but it surprised me in terms of the feel of it, uh, which is also obviously the sound, the amount of tech that you've got in it for a, a fitting point of view so they'd probably be able to, to get that to me perfectly but um, that price point as well is massively important and I think when you combine all those factors it's a difficult club to beat that in terms of the numbers off it are very good it's more impressive than my existing club um, the, the feel of it is far better obviously the technology that's in there it's an improvement because that's what now four years old um, and compared to the other clubs that I've tried recently which are sort of like the the ping uh, the new tight least uh, and the Callaway the epic prior to the, the new one coming out, um, I'd, I'd have that well above it. Right, so that's Andy's done, that's Andy's opinion, and uh, so far so good, that's two of us done. Let's get Brian Treadwell up next. Brian is an 11 handicapper, currently plays with the uh, Callaway Rogue Driver, and let's see how that fares up in his overall impression of this F9 driver. Uh, a nice compact club um, and at address it's also a, a good looking club nice remarkable bit. in that sense and that makes it probably quite remarkable it, it wouldn't be anything to put you off or distract you from what you're trying to do with a golf club the rogue has almost a gunshot type of sound sound to it this isn't as pronounced um, but sound is not something I'm, I'm overly bothered or affected by when I'm when I'm playing anyways it wouldn't as I say enhance or diminish the club spot on that's exactly how all drivers should be priced it would encourage um, standard club golfers like myself to to swap and change more often if they were sensibly priced I play off 11 in terms of performance uh, I'm, I'm not yet at the stage where distance is my greatest priority it's more important to have a ball in play from the tee uh, and I felt as though this delivered uh, in that respect uh, in terms of the rogue my my feeling about it, absent data, is that the rogue would probably get me longer, but it would also get me uh, wider um, with with some of those shots. So in that sense, it's a club that's, that's depending on your handicap level, uh, it's a club definitely to have um, as part of the consideration when you come for a fitting. So we're starting to get through the players now. Number three is in, opinion number three is in from Team Average, so thanks to Brian. Now it is on to someone higher up in the handicap level. We've got Dave Millard, 16 handicapper, playing a Cleveland driver that's quite a few years old. He's dying to try out the F9 from Cobra and we're dying to hear his opinion. So let him get in some golf balls and uh, then, as ever, we'll get his opinion. it looks nice sits nice behind the ball um, color wise yeah lovely yeah nothing completely dif uh, nothing different to what I've already got um, couldn't really notice the difference very very similar Perfect. Uh, price wise I guess on the market seems very reasonable yeah obviously it's come below some of the others yeah very good okay pretty much um, the same good shots bad shots with both um, that's the reality of obviously the handicap that I'm off and obviously not playing consistent golf. Um, I guess obviously sort of grip could have been an element in that. I've got a larger grip um, due to hand size, control on the, the old driver. I definitely think that made a difference. I think it's, you know, fine tuning, minute detail sometimes it's going to age you. Was there anything in there that persuades you to buy the Cobra and swap from your, your Cleveland club really? No, nothing at all. Nothing. No. 
um, stick with what I've got. Right, so we have four players down, one more left to test, and that is uh, my friend Lewis Johnson, a PGA professional. So we've got a scratch golfer in now to give his opinion on a Cobra F9, and uh, let's see what this does in the hands of a more than capable golfer. Way it looks uh, really happy like the like the lines on it uh, like so it sat behind the ball and um, sort of first Cobra driver I've felt in a long time that um, I've put down and thought Joe you know what I'd be happy to uh, give that a go and um, really like it you know on the shelf as well I think it looks great they clean not too much going on here so uh, I like it nice clean simple and, uh, and nice and um, absolutely no feedback uh, the complete opposite uh, feel wise you know sounds sounds fantastic you see it fly and and it did just nothing um, which is a real shame because uh, everything else has been a positive so far uh, yeah I think uh, going into 2019 I think they sort of it's they've pitched at a point where it is maybe slightly below um, its competitors um, you know and I think they've, they've done the right thing I think they, if they, there was one sort of personally I think they, there's a bit of criticism of people, you know, they're going a little bit too high. I think Cobra have done the right thing and they've produced a great looking product. Uh, performance wise, maybe not for me, but, but price point wise, I think it would, it's going to attract a lot of people towards it. Yeah, so when I, uh, when I compare the two, you know, really happy with the sort of shaft, shaft setup that I had for the club um, against my own, pretty comparable. Um, and then having hit them and hit a few good shots with both, um, the numbers just don't stack up. Um, at M3, 11 yards longer with pretty much the same ball speed if not a little bit less and um, there'd definitely be no reason for me to change at the moment uh, from, a, from a current driver. Right okay before I give my uh, opinion on all that let me just say thank you to everybody who got involved yesterday in giving up their free time to conduct this test so uh, yeah thanks to everyone on team average there. What did we learn? Um, I think we learned one thing f for definite. Everybody agreed that the price point was far more realistic for manufacturers. That got a massive thumbs up. After that, I think we learned that there are variables. There are always variables that need to be considered. And I think it differs from player to player. And I think that's why custom fit is so very, very important. This video was without doubt one of the most enjoyable videos I've made since I started YouTube and I said that because I did one of these uh, a few months ago a little bit more detail on this one a little bit more comparison so something to work in terms of comparables because we had their own data in there and I think it really highlighted good honest assessments from real golfers amateur golfers which is what it's all about I've always said this my channel is about testing golf clubs at amateur level Professionals will get very much similar performance out of every golf club that is out there. This golf club has received absolutely fantastic reviews. We've seen there five very different opinions, but they're real, they're very honest, and I love the fact that they've come from handicap levels from scratch right the way to, through to 16, and a real good fair assessment. And it just shows that, again, I think some people would probably, have, in that small product group, um, sample group, would have gone out and bought the product, Others clearly would not, and I think that's the important bit. It is very much there is a driver shaft setup that will differ for each and every one of us, and is it important that we go out and get custom fit if we are in a market for a driver and make sure that we try them for our very selves. That's the important bit. Anyway, like I said, I enjoyed this video a lot. Um, I want to make more of them, but I'll be led as ever by what you thought of them. So comments down below. Tell me if you liked the video. Tell me if I should do more of this style of video. Um, tell me if we should make it uh, a regular thing on the channel where we've got because that was the intention initially we've got sort of a bit way laid as we always do with these things and I really want to make this a regular feature this year and get more amateurs involved testing golf clubs in this style and in this format so share the video around do anything you can to help me to get this video out there because I really believe that uh, this is a great way forward for me and for team average on this channel this year right that is all I'm going to say uh, thumbs up, comments down below, and I'll see you very, very soon.